a sidebar on what's happening or what has been happening and with the body of Christ it's okay to feel not okay it's okay to be real because God knows exactly what's on your heart God knows exactly what's troubling you God knows your shortcomings and your shortfall. But we know that God is still God. I urge you, I beseech you, if you are struggling, please let somebody you know, you trust, and that can pray, pray for you. You don't have to be specific about what's bothering you. Just simply say, I need prayer. Just simply say, I need help. Just simply say, I am not okay. That is okay. Moving on. The scripture for today is the Gospel of John 11, 21. Now, I typically read from the Holy Name Bible because it puts the proper names of God in, in his text. So it may be, well, it is slightly different from the King James Version. So again, the Gospel of John 11, 21. And it says, Then said Martha unto Yeshua, Yeshua, Rabbi, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. If you had been here, my brother had not died. That will make sense when I get into the word. But right now we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the body of Christ. We're going to pray for the world. But also we're going to pray for the visitors of the ministries of love and hope. Again, those that have come through the doors, those that have come to the door did not go through, those that have signed the names on the visitors' cards, we shall pray for them all. So prepare your hearts and your minds for prayer right now. Father God, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to be before you, to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we thank you, Father God, for clothing us, Father God. We thank you for 
putting a roof over our heads, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, food on the table, Lord Jesus. We have so much to be thankful for. We thank you, Father God, for the gift of eyesight, for the gift of hearing, Lord Jesus, for the function of our limbs. We thank you, Father God, for our hands and for our feet. We thank you, Father God, that we are here amongst the land of the living. Because we know, Father God, it could have been the other way. We thank you, Father God, that we know you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Father God, that we are privileged to be able to call you not just Father, but to call you Daddy, because when our times are tough, we can't be formal. Because I recall as a child when a time was, when I was hurt, I didn't say, I didn't say Father, I said Daddy. So we all we calling you right now. Daddy, we need you, Father God. We need you, Daddy. I pray, Father God that you would go from heart to heart and breast to breast, healing Father God. I pray, Father God, for all of us, all of us who need healing, whether it's mind, body, soul, or spirit, we will confess, we will be honest with you, Father God. Yes, Lord, please come heal me. In the name of Christ. Father God, we place every visitor and their friends and families at the foot of your throne. We bring them to you. We take off the roof and place them at your feet in the name of Christ Jesus. Because some of them can't do it. Some of them won't do it, Father God. So we, as a people of God, we stand in the gap, Lord Jesus. And we ask you, Father God, to move according to our faith. On their behalf, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, that wherever they are, they will be where you want them to be. That they will be where they need to be, doing what you have commanded them to do. We pray, Father God, that we as a people, meaning the ministers of love and hope, and also the body of Christ, will learn and to finally understand how important a resource time is. Because you allocated a certain amount and we do not know that amount. But what we do know is you've given us enough time to do your perfect will. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So, the topic of today is Please go get Tyrone. Now, if I were living in D.C., that's what I would say. But I don't live in D.C. I live in Connecticut now. So, in that case, please go get Tyler. Again, please go get Tyler. Now, the scripture for this, I'm going to read it slowly. Please. It is Mark 5, 1 through 10. We've all read it before. We've all heard the story, but please be prayerful about this. Mark, again, this is from the Holy Name Bible, not the King James, so the names will be slightly different. Now, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gardenese. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had been dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Yeshua afar off, he ran and worshipped 
him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yeshua, thou son of the Most High El? I adjure thee by Elohim that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. Oh, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. My name, Ishibabari Sira, is Legion, for there are so many. And you know, one thing about just that verse, Legion, is not a proper name. It's not even a proper number. Some people say it's a thousand. We don't know. But what we do in Shibabara, mm, 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 uh, Ishibaris, ah, good Lord. Ah, ah. I, don't, I don't know who it is, um, or whose family member it is. What I do know is that we all have a Tyrone or a Tyler in our family. And it hurts. I'm, it hurts. I'm not feeling my pain. I'm feeling somebody else's pain. I don't, I don't know whose it is. <clears throat> okay. I recall when I first did my trial sermon. That's what they call it at the Church of God in Christ, your trial sermon, which is your initial sermon. And it was uh, the Gospel of John 11, 35. Jesus wept. And I recall I fasted and I prayed. I didn't know what I was doing. I just let the Lord use me and, and, and lead me. And I got up. Before the church, it was a big church, still it is a big church. And uh, I remember the first thing I said after reading scripture was, we sit here in these four walls, dancing and shouting, praising God. But outside those doors is blood running in the streets. The only one that jumped up and said, praise God, was my mentor, Pastor Evangelist Walker. Everyone else, they didn't say a word because they didn't like what I had said. See, that's the issue with the body of Christ. You see, Baba, -da -da. We don't go to the tombs to get those that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. We don't go to the streets, to the homeless shelter. We don't go there to present the living and true God. Unfortunately, most of our churches have become self-stocking churches. They want to drive fancy cars, live in big houses, which is fine. But what about your brother? What about your sister? The kingdom of God, the very definition of kingdom is common wealth. The good of all. Everybody should enjoy. The second benefit about a kingdom is that everything belongs to the king. So, if I have a house, if I have a car, and I see my brother and sister roaming the streets, and I simply drive by them, how is that representing the kingdom of God? Lord Jesus. One of the many things I like about 
Pastor Swift. It's that like he goes out to the streets. He's been out to the streets. He goes to the pond in Thompsonville. As a matter of fact, whenever I'm out walking, whenever I talk to somebody, they always ask, do you know Pastor Swift? Do you know? I say, yes, I do. He helped me a lot. And they respect him because he respects them. Why? Why? Because God, what we need to understand is that God put a watermark on every person on the face of this earth. He said, we, man, made in this image. That's the watermark. So when you go, when you see someone with tattered clothing who might not smell good, you must identify the king within them and talk to the king within them because that's the watermark. And as you know, as you know, with a watermark, you have to look at it in a certain light. You just can't see it looking straight on. You have to take the light of Christ. When you look at anyone, it could be a pimp. White beating, drug dealing pimp. You know, I don't like I don't like them either. But you have to minister to the king in them. So that that person, he or she, will allow the king and the kingdom to manifest in and around them. Now, I'm going to give two examples, just, just two, of men who have gone out to places where other people were afraid to go. Unfortunately. That's, that's in every state. Unfortunately. Because at one time it wasn't like that. At one time, people respected the ministers. Why? Because they used to be worthy of respect. At one point, Preacher can walk down the street. Guys playing craps, they stop. Guys drinking, they will hide the bottle. Now, they invite the preacher in. You want to play craps? You want to drink with me? There used to be a point at one time when the missionaries or the mothers of the church could walk anywhere, any time of the night. That's gone. Why? Because of the men. As I said it, because of the men. Now, this story, before I go on to these two gentlemen, this preacher told a story about when he was coming up, his father was a, he's a pastor now, but his father was a pastor. And he said, when you only have six pews, it's easy to identify when somebody's not there. And he said there was a, a, a faithful deacon, prayer warrior. And he would come with his wife every day, faithful. To one day, the wife wasn't there. Two Sundays, wife wasn't there. So the mother of the church called the mother, the deacon's wife, and said, I'm going to make up a name. Mary, how come you're not in church? Well, she told the mother of the church, I told my husband, until you go to the crack house and get my son, I am not going back to church. The pastor has done nothing for me. You said God could do anything. Nothing has changed. So I told my husband, the deacon, until you go to the crack house and get my son, I'm not going back. Well, three weeks went by, four weeks. But the fifth week, the deacon, his wife, and his son were in church. Now, don't miss this. No, the son wasn't cleaned up. He wasn't clean shaven. He didn't have a little suit in the top. He looked like he just came from a crack house. 
And that is the mentality that men and women of God should have. There used to be a time, because I came up down south. I, I, I didn't grow up here. I grew up down south, south of the Mason Dixon. So things were different. I grew up where mothers of the church in their white dresses, church of God, white dresses, they would, they would go get guys on a corner smoking weed, bring the church. They would go get people, guys drinking, bring them to church. And they went again because they respected the mothers of the church. So, this one, and these two guys are men of the cloth. One, his ministry is in East L.A. with a whole lot, over 400 games. His name is Reverend Greg Boyle. Reverend Greg Boyle, East L.A., over 400 games. Violent gangs. But let me say this. So it's a little bit of history here. The Bloods and the Crips. The original intent. When they were first formed. They were formed. As protection from the police. Because of police brutality. In African American neighborhoods. That was the original intent of the Bloods and the Crips. Now you know. So. Now, the former gang members, even the gang members, they love Reverend Boyer. A father boy is a Catholic church. Father boy. Why? Catholic. Why? Because he embodies 1 John 3.16. Hereby we perceive the love of God. For he gave his life for us, and we ought to give our lives for our brethren. He considers them his brethren. Why? Because he identified the water mark on them. He doesn't judge them. He doesn't judge them. His whole intent is to help them. Now, they describe him. These are the gang members and some of the former gang they said, this white guy, this is what he said, you should ride, ride his bike at night where they shoot Uzis and all that stuff. Ride his bike at night. White guy by himself. Where well, they couldn't see that well, he wasn't by himself because Christ was with him. Is with him. And they said, they thought he would go away just like everybody else. Because the work was too hard. And the results didn't come fast enough. But he didn't. He didn't. They, they gave him a nickname. They called Homie. They called him G. G-Man. Now, if you know anything about gangsters, they don't, oh, they give you labels okay. But not these type of labels. They give you other type of labels that I, I will not say, but I think you know where I'm going. But they respected this man because he stood, he stands tall. Even when the bullets were flying, that did not deter him. But yet, get this, he was never shot. He had faith in God. And he knew, I have to go to the tombs because no one else is going. The preachers aren't going. The bishops aren't going. The elders aren't going. The deacons aren't going. So I'll go. He's been going over 40 years. And even the Jesuit church tried to remove him from him as assignment. Because that's what they do. They rotate. He said, no. No. This is my assignment given to me by God. I would not go. He's still there. Because when you stand on the side of justice and righteousness, you will stand. And God will fight your battles. But that's what he does. Now, one of the, he's, he's formed 
corporations just for the employment of former gang members and any gang member that wants a job. Because he knows, listen, it's not just the soul I have to minister to. It's not just the soul that needs healing. It's the whole body. My body, soul, and spirit. He realizes that. He realized that. I can't say, if you're hungry, go be fed. No, I have to feed them. I have to reach into my pocket and feed them in the name of Christ Jesus. If someone is hurt, I have to heal them. I have to bandage them myself. I can't just send them away with nothing. And as a result, because he kept sowing, he kept reaping. See, God would never, never give you an assignment and not give you the tools or the resources to complete it, no matter how big it is. That's the whole point. Rely on faith. That's what Father Boyle has and is doing. Rely on faith. And as a result, he gets donations. But also, as a result, the corporations that he's formed to help these people, they're profitable. So he can take that money and pay his employees and offer more jobs. Now, one thing, ah, this is special to me. Here's description, now listen to this, of the watermark on each person. He said, it is the sacred embedded in the ordinary, the sacred embedded in the ordinary. My God, Lord Jesus, where are all these men? Where are all these men? We know there's still gang violence going on. He needs help. He needs more men. And I say men because I won't have my wife out there in the streets. I won't have my wife going to the crack houses. Nope. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. That's why I say men. And the reason why, another reason why is, listen, listen, this is important. God told me this. Listen. Now, women cannot lead men to church. Men follow men to church. Because if that was not the case, there'd be as many men as there are women. Because there are more women in church. But men don't follow women to church. Men follow women to the club. Because as you know, whenever there's a club, they say ladies get in free, but men got to pay. Men will not go to the club if there are no women. So again, men follow men to church, to the local body of expression. They follow men. Now, he also, one last thing he's, that I'm going to talk about, Father Boyle. Someone asked him, why do young people, in his belief, why do young people join the gang? Some people say to fit in. They've been rejected. They want, a, they want a family. They want a unity. They want conformity. They want to belong. He said they join the gang because, listen, the lethal absence of hope. The lethal absence of hope. The lethal absence of hope. And he says they're not trying to find something. They're running away from something. Whether it's an abusive household, abusive mom, abusive dad, abusive mom's boyfriend, abusive brother, abusive sister. Whatever. They're running away from something. But we know that they also are seeking something. Christ. So, before I go on to the next preacher, gentlemen, where is Tyler? 
Where is Tyrone? On your couch? Or are you getting ready for church? Put on your stocking, just tying your tie. Where is Tyrone? Where is Tyrone? On a basketball court. Where is he? Could be a she as well. Where is she? Playing video games. Where is Tyrone? Where is Tyler? On your job. Because everybody's tune is not the same. There are tombs in Greenwich, Connecticut. There are tombs in Beverly Hills. There are tombs everywhere. Every neighborhood. There are tombs. So, what is your deal? Cigarettes? Alcohol? Pornography? What is your demon or demon? God already know it. You know. Confess it. Because the thing is, is, if you notice, whenever someone responds to what's my name and it's a number, that means they're locked up. I'm prisoner 5, 6, 8, 9, 5, 2. That means they're bound. That means they need They can be a millionaire. Millionaires need Christ too. Now I'll give you an example. She's not a millionaire, but recall the young woman that I worked with. And I said how she was as mean as a rattlesnake when I first started. And every time I say something, I say, I ask Melissa, because she can she'll vouch for it. So, and I told you how God said, pray for it. I, and you know I'm an honest guy. If I were a woman, I would smack her. And she were a guy would punch her in the face. I'm just going to be honest with you. So, every day, and God said, keep speaking to her. So I said, hey, how you doing? Goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello. Just, just a nasty, you know. But God said, pray for her because you do not know her background or her tomb. He, he's fine, I didn't know. He didn't tell me. He, didn't, he just said, pray for her. So years ago, I started there in 2017. That's 2020 now. Now, and listen again, get vouch for this. Now she, she's, she's very special to me now. She calls me her work dad. Because I pray for her. I deceive for her. I counsel her. She's called me at six in the morning. Sometimes she's you know, five times a day during the working day. She's called. Because she needs help. She's crying out. And I pray for her. I pray with her. I counsel her. So it went from her being me as a rattlesnake to now her saying I'm her work dad. Because of the love of Christ. Now. Now. I know exactly. She told me a few things and as to why she acts the way she does. So now I know what to pray for. She said, one example, she said, I, as people know, if I had a daughter, she'd be spoiled to death. And I said, I wouldn't be able to say no. She said, well, my dad didn't say no, but all I wanted from my dad was a hug. That was it. He bought me everything. I just wanted a hug. That was her, that is her tomb. The family dynamic. Is that your tomb? Again. God can heal that, but you have to confess it. You got to bring it to him. I need help. I need healing. I need to have reconciliation. There needs to be repentance. Everybody's tumor is not the same. So now, as we know, switching gears to Chicago, We've heard about, we hear about Chicago every single day, about the, the deaths, the gun violence, the babies and the young people and the old people getting shot by stray bullets. But there's a guy there too, again, from the Catholic Church. I right, put your God in Christ, where are you? I right, Baptist, where are you? Holiness, where, Holiness, where are you? His name is 
Father Michael Fledger. Father Michael Fledger. I like him. I mean, I like both of them, but I re I did hear about him. I didn't hear about the father in East LA. Again, this is the south side of Chicago. Whew. And he says that there are over 60 gangs fighting for turf and for the drug, the control of the drug market, what they call it that. And he too goes to the crack houses. He too goes to the gang's, gang's headquarters or, or houses, to the tombs. Because he too believes in salvation of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. He realizes that somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to tell them about Christ Jesus. He also understands that if you are in your tomb, more than likely, if you are like the guy in Mark, and this is significant, please listen to this. Now, when we read about where he's cutting himself with stones, he is not trying to kill himself. Listen, listen, listen. Because whenever a man is cut by a stone, that is a representation of circumcision, which means as an outward appearance of being clean, he was trying to self-medicate. He was trying to cleanse himself. He wasn't trying to kill himself. Hope you understand that. So, Father, Michael Father Flesh, this is a bad dude. Now, get this. I'm reading what he says. Okay. When a child is shot and killed in this city, in the south side in particular, and there's no idea of who may have done it, I, he says, I, I put a bounty, a $5,000 bounty on their head. He said, we've given out about 24 rewards over the last 10 years. I have 12 bounties out right now. Are you that bad? You say you bad. Are you out there at the pond? Are you out there at the crack houses? You know where the drugs are. You know where the drug dealers are. Are you out there? Yeah, he is. He's putting, he's letting the gangsters know, I have a bounty on your head. I'm coming for you because I'm going to protect God's people. I'm going to protect God's children. I am going to protect those that don't know God, that I want them to know God. I am going to protect them by putting a bounty on your head. God said, fear not. He's not fear. What about you? What about me? Sometimes, sometimes I, I, I'll, I'm kind of, you know, like Peter. I mean, I'm hot. Or cold. There's no, there's no middle for me. Either I'm all wrong or I'm all right. Nah, just ask Muslim. Nope. One way or the other. So sometimes I go over. Sometimes I go over. There was one time in D.C. We lived on, lived in Northwest D.C. And at that time, it was, you know, there was some, I wanted some knuckleheads, but knuckleheads. And they would talk bad, you know, rough and tough and all that stuff, but they were kids. Oh, they were grown men, but, you know, the mentality of kids. And I recall that when I got off of work, there would be so many, they were standing on the corner that I saw the adults they were either walking the street or walking the dirt, you know, to avoid them. But me being who I am, I said, walk me. Listen. So, listen, I'm going to work every day to support my family. I am not walking in the dirt. You know, Pastor, you feel the same way. A lot of guys, Sly, Todd, you, know, you feel the same way. 
So I said, I'm not walking with them. So I walked right down the middle of them. I turned around, I said, listen, listen. That's my basement. There's a steel metal door. It's a concrete floor, concrete wall. If you think you're bad, my house is the Brown House 217. You can strip down to the weights. You can lock the door. If everyone makes it out, you win. Nobody took up, took me up and off. But whenever next next day, I walk down, they moved out the way. Why? Because now I had an opportunity to minister to, to them. Because they knew, okay, this guy's not afraid. He's not afraid of us. So I told them, I said, listen, I want you to be in one of three places. Either college, trade school. Oh, so no, no, two places, I'm sorry. College or trade school. I don't want otherwise you'll be in two other places in prison or jail or be or dead. Of course, not all of them received. But nothing else I could do. I continue to minister to them, whether they received it or not. But I did. And that's what God, God will protect you. Now don't be a fool. You have to do what God tells you to do. But don't be a punk either. What you gonna do? These two, two, two white guys, two white guys in Chicago and East LA. They still living. What are you? What about you? God's not telling you, or maybe he is, to go to East LA or go to Chicago. And even the guy in Chicago, the preacher in Chicago, he said, I need help. I've never seen it like this. He said, It's just him. We know there are a lot of churches around there. Or do they have the form of godliness and deny the power thereof? Maybe that's what the problem is. Is that your problem? We got on the mask. We have the mask. But inside, little punks. is Tyro where is Tyro is he still by himself is she by herself the little girl whose tomb is sex trafficking the little girl who's Mom's boyfriend abuses her. Listen. Listen. God wants us to pray. And God wants us to do. I have no problem kicking down a door of a crack. I don't care. As anybody who knows me, I am very protective of children. And me being who I am, I know I'm not, I'm not the only guy. I kill you. I say it like it is. If you hurt a child in front of me, I will get you. Nope. I'm not put a bounty on your head. And I'm coming after you. And see, people who know me, the children that grew up here know this. And see, people who know me, who have children around me, they know this about me, and they feel comfortable knowing that my child is safe with Elder Chad Whityard. My child is safe with Pastor Swift. My child is safe with Sly. My child is safe with Todd. They know that. Because we recognize the watermark on every person. And every person is worth saving 
for calling together. Because he said, He said, His only begotten Son to save the world. His only begotten Son to save the world. So, I'll, one last thing. The people whose tombs could be their workplace, okay, could be their home. You have to talk to people. Otherwise, you don't you won't know this story. You won't know this story. And they have to trust you that you won't go telling their business to anyone but God. They have to trust you because most people, it's by default. We don't trust people on our jobs because we've worked long enough. We know how people are. Backbiters, backstabbers, liars, cheaters. But if you are a member of the body of Christ, those descriptions should not fit you. And people should be able to recognize that because of your character and your integrity. You can't rescue Tyler or Tyrone without having integrity. Because the thing is, the people who are on the streets, they can read you very well and very quickly. That's one of the gifts. They do that for survival reasons. And you'll know, when you start talking to people, you'll be able to sense the breakthrough, that trust. But understand this about trust. It takes a long time to earn it, but it takes a to lose it. You can't make anybody trust you. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. Like I said, my my work daughter, I'm not gonna say her name. I love her to death. Sometimes I I, I smother her because I'm constantly asking, how you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? I don't know what else to do. That's that's how God made me. Oh, that's how he made me. Ask my sons. I hug them. No, I don't care how they feel about hugging. I kiss them. So what? I can take you to the ground. I don't care. Whatever. I'm going to get mine. They know it. There's no point in fighting because they know it's coming. But all children, all people, I want you to feel love. Not that fake stuff. Hey, how you doing, oh? Nope. Mm -mm. The real stuff. The love of Christ. Because everybody, whether they know Christ or not, they know how the love of Christ feels. Because they will feel different when they come around you. After they learn to trust you. You'll see a difference in the lives from your prayers, from your fasting, from your intercessions, from you crying out late in the midnight hour and early in the morning on their behalf. Oh, God's going to do it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I never thought it would happen. I'm going to be honest with you. You didn't, you, before what I saw, like, it happened. It took years. But again, I didn't know what God had to fix in her. I did not know. But God knows. And she trusts me. She says, I trust you. I trust you. And for her, it took a lot to say. Because she doesn't trust a lot of people. So I end with this. Go get Tyrone. Go get Tyrone. If they're on your couch, if they're in their room playing video, go get them. Because if Tyrone or Tyler are in your house, there's a better opportunity for you to get them than for me to get them. So if they are in your house, you pray. You pray. And you minister. So you can minister to them constantly. You can read the Bible in their presence. You can pray out loud while they're there. You can lay hands on them. 
So what's going to happen is you pray for the Tyler or the, or the Tyrone in your home, then God will lead you, hey, elder, hey, blah, blah, brother, sister, pray for blah, blah, blah. So then, we're in agreement. Right? We're two or three in agreement. Well, there I am in a mess. So we're in agreement. We're in agreement. We're in agreement. So not only are you praying for him, now I'm praying for him, or whomever, and then God may say, hey, Chad, tell blah, blah, blah to pray for blah, blah, blah. Don't give them a reason. Then it's a check. Then what can happen, it can be a whole circle around them. In eventually, a whole circle of prayer warriors surrounding that Tyrone or that Tyler. So please, 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 I beseech you. Ask God to identify to you a Tyler or a Tyrone in your life. Because my God, to try to endure what's going on now without Christ. I couldn't imagine. I don't want to imagine. Because with no Christ, there is no hope. Where there's no hope, there's no love. There's no love, there's no hope. Because God is love. So I'll be end on this. Please. Please. Go out there. That's what God commissioned us to do. He didn't say wait for, them, wait for them to come. He said, go out there. Go, ye therefore. Go, ye therefore. Go, go, go. It wasn't a question. It was not a suggestion. He commanded, go. He didn't say, would you? He said, go. And then, I thank you for taking the time to pray and to worship with us. And I offer an invitation to all those who might not know Christ as the Lord and Savior. Or perhaps you have turned your back on Christ and walked with him. I ask that you come back to him. If you don't know him, please accept him as your Lord and Savior. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Amen.